Hi everybody, it's uh, Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love and I am here this morning with Duncan, my Doberman, and I wanted to thank you all for, uh, for joining in and, and listening to this, um, to this video. And I wanted to focus today on um, just managing a geriatric pet and a terminally ill one at that and um, you know, just, uh, just ways that, that you can sort of navigate this time because it is very, very difficult. Hi guys. <laughs> and um, I know that, that many of you are struggling with yourself, um, with, with your own pet and, and also helping, helping you decide um, you know, when, it, when is time. So I, I thought it best for me to do this video because um, I'm in the same boat right now myself. So this is Duncan. Duncan is 13 and a half years old, which for a Doberman is, is, um, is really advanced and I know that. Uh, so I know I'm blessed that I've had um, a, good, a good amount of time with him. But we actually adopted him when he was uh, six years old. So we didn't get him until he was um, almost a senior. So, uh, so that was... Um, you know, a really a big blessing in our lives that, that we were able to adopt him um, and found such a great dog. And, and this goes to show you that even older dogs can, can get adopted. And I love the, the gray muzzles. So uh, we got him about um, seven years ago. And so he just turned 13 a few months ago. And um, just to let you know what, what he's struggling with now, besides being utterly handsome and a lady killer, he uh, has a few issues. Um, and really what he's struggling most with is mobility um, and then his heart. So a lot of dogs and, and cats also, as they get older, they're going to, they're going to um, suffer with uh, and, uh, you know, and have arthritis and, you know, bad hips or, or shoulders or elbows. Um, but also just as, as pets get older, they, they get weaker. So the muscles get thinner, they atrophy. And so I always think of these guys with spaghetti legs, you know, they got these little shaky legs in the back and, um, and you know, that's a very common thing as, as a pet ages, but Duncan on top of, of that, he also has a neuropathy. And so basically his neurons just don't fire right. And I, I know men, many of our families have pets that have a type of, of neuropathy. So, um, maybe degenerative myelopathy, which is um, something that affects German Shepherds a lot. So Duncan's is, is kind of similar to that, a little bit different, where, um, you know, when he goes for walks a, a few, maybe two, two years ago, he started just to drag his back toes and, and I'd hear his, his nails scraping on the ground. So you'll see that um, just as almost the start of neuropathies where they, they stumble or they trip. And so um, that started happening about two years ago. And then unfortunately it does progress and get worse over time where, you know, he struggles to get up. Once he's up, he can kind of manage his way around, but, but getting up and going down is, is probably the, the, the biggest challenge for him. And then some days he just, you know, he has a really hard time out there in, in the yard. So uh, he's, um, but he's, you know, we're managing that as best we can. So um, he has that. And then over the summer, so um, uh, last July or August, I noticed him just breathing funny and, and coughing a bit more. So even though I'm a veterinarian, I know to take him to the specialist. And so, hi Eric, hi Ashley. Um, and so I brought him to the cardiologist and um, because I know that with, with Dobermans, it is something that they're commonly affected is, is bad hearts. So uh, he has, um, he was diagnosed with something called dilated cardiomyelopathy, which is basically DCM, and that is a big floppy heart <laughs> that doesn't push the blood out well when he when his heart uh, beats. So he's got that, and um, a along with a um, a uh, an arrhythmia. So so not only does his, does his heart not you know squish really well, it also just is kind of wonky, and so the electricity is not working right either. So. Um, <laughs> tail. I just uh, I just wanted to give you a summary of really the, the two the two main things that he's struggling with. So we've got his mobility and then his bad heart. And so oftentimes our pets will have multiple problems going on. And and then within that problem, what what are the things that um, the symptoms that we're going to see? And so um, when when we help families with with uh, their terminally ill or very advanced aged pet, we always are asked, "How will I know his time?" And, um, and that's, that's a question that I'll prob probably get asked multiple times a day and, and all the Lapa Love veterinarians are, are asked this as well. And so I thought I'll give you um, 
you know, the ways that I help families and, and also the, the ways that I'm thinking with Duncan specifically. So I know right now he looks pretty, pretty good. He looks chill. This is uh, morning time. I'm out here in Southern California. So hi everybody, lunchtime on the East Coast. But uh, you know, mornings are usually a little bit better for him and as the day progresses, things, you know, start to, to advance and he breathes a little differently. And, and a lot of times we'll see that. So we'll see nighttime panting or pacing, which he doesn't do necessarily, but just his increase in respiration and and um, and that that not only does it affect you know him it affects me because I start freaking out looking at him breathing funny so um, just because I'm a vet doesn't mean I'm 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 not affected by <laughs> by by my guy's symptoms and and what that means so when families ask us about um, when is time I always I always talk to them about how to evaluate quality of life and really there's there's a couple of components. First is, I want to know what, what the main um, ailment that pet has. And, and so, so with Duncan, really it's, it's two, right? So we've got his mobility and we have his heart issues. And so I want to know not only what symptoms that, that is going to present during, you know, during their, their life and managing it. Oh, oh, Dr. Dan was great. A good shout out for Dr. Dan. He's awesome. So Nicole, uh, Duncan is 13, a little over 13. So he is... Um, uh, definitely a, an old man, a geriatric, but I think he looks pretty good for his age. So, um, so back to the, the ailment that the pet may have, and when I'm determining, you know, determining helping families and, and deciding when is time, I not only want to see the um, the the symptoms that they're going to have while they're managing it while they're still alive, and then also the symptoms that they're going to face as they die. And so I know that's a, it's a hard thing for us to talk about sometimes and, and cope with, but, um, but I think it's very important. So the way we die is really important to me. And so um, <laughs> Ashley says he looks like a great 13 year old thanks to, thanks to mom. I'd like to take some, you know, some credit, but good genes too, I think. Uh, so so, um, you know, I know that many of you are struggling with the decision and, and Angela, you are as well. And so I think about how Duncan may die with his two, with his two main ailments, right? So, so with mobility, that's not going to be an organ failure, right? So that's not his heart is failing or his kidneys are failing. So what happens when he can't get up one day, when he can't, um, you know, when he struggles to go to the bathroom and he falls and he just, and I'm not around maybe and he can't get up. And so I know there's gonna be days where I help him up and he gets up and then he starts walking again, but there's gonna be days where he can't get up. But will he pass from that? And the answer is usually no. And so, so with mobility issues, a lot of times the owners are waiting and waiting and waiting for their pet to pass at night or you know when they're not home or when they're sleeping or something like that. But with mobility, sometimes we have to actually um, you know, help them pass because that, that ailment itself is not going to be life limiting. So it's, it's definitely, you know, not something that is, is, um, easy to manage a, a dog with mobility issues. Now, Duncan, he's 110 pounds. So he's a big guy, but even little, you know, 30 pound beagle that's got really bad, you know, arthritis and is struggling is, is, is hard to, is hard to help up and move around. So, um, luckily you guys can't really tell from the video maybe, but I'm a, I'm a big girl. I'm six one. So I can use a lot of physics and leverage behind me to, to pick up Duncan when, when he does stumble. But, um, for most, that's not something that, that they can handle. So the way a pet will pass for mobility is going to be very different than the way a pet will pass from an organ failure or maybe even cancer. And so, um, so with, with Duncan's heart problem, that actually is going to lead to either two ways that he will pass. I mean, basically two ways. Either one day his heart will have such a bad arrhythmia that, that it just doesn't beat well. And so his, the blood won't circulate and he'll pass, um, basically instantly. Um, so, so he'll pass out and then, and then he will pass. So, so sudden death. Um, but the other way heart, the heart, um, conditions will lead to, to, to passing is that the heart, um, doesn't function well, so there, there's a fluid buildup. And so there'll be fluid buildup in the lungs. And that's why we hear a lot of the coughing and the struggling to breathe or the increased respiratory effort. And so I always watch his respiratory rate and I count his rate every day and every night and when he's, and when he's resting. And as you can see, hopefully, he's resting you know, really well right now. And so his breathing looks good, but there are some days where I see his belly is pushing and so that I don't like so much. Um, 
Okay, so I've got uh, Angela. So we've got, a, she's got a, a 15 year old uh, silky terrier. Oh, I love terriers. I'm just gonna read more. Um, and she's getting afraid, um, and it's almost uh, you know, scary to scary to carry them. So that's another good point. Carrying pets, and especially when they're painful, they may they may not not like getting carried. So even though you might have a, a smaller animal that you can carry, going up and down stairs can be dangerous. You might hold them in a way that hurts, so then they they might snap, and and that's not normal for them. So um, even the small guys, it's it's not easy managing those mobility issues. But um, but with Duncan. Um, with his with his heart, I want to make sure that he that he doesn't go into heart failure, which is basically such a amount, uh, great amount of fluid buildup in the lungs that he that he struggles to breathe. And so that's what I'm dealing with right now. And and um, you know whether he passes uh, instantly from from arrhythmia, I I or heart failure, Mother Nature will um, you know ha has a little bit of a, a say in that. <laughs> But um, if she doesn't, and and things go longer over time where he starts to, to struggle breathing, then I will absolutely make that decision to say goodbye. And I, because I don't want him to feel that anxiety of not being able to breathe. And so that is, um, that is why when we're, when we're talking about quality of life and how to decide when it's time, the first thing I think of is what is going on with the pet, with, so what's their main ailment, and, and what is the pro progression of that, and also, how fast do I have to make that decision? So with mobility issues, oftentimes it'll be two or three days where they just, they, they're having a really hard time and they can't get up or they're, you know, haven't gotten up on their own for a few days. And so, and so we make that decision and, and we don't have to rush them to an emergency room, let's say, because they're in, they're in distress. Um, although a, a dog that's down and in pain can, can be very distressful. But with a heart failure, to me, that is the, the worst um, type of anxiety because when you can't breathe, how hard that is. And so, um, so I wanna make sure that Duncan never has to experience that, which means I will have to make that decision sooner than later. Um, uh, okay, so, so uh, Angela says her, her little one has d dimension sen senility also. So that is a big problem with our older guys is having um, cognition issues. So just like uh, Alzheimer's, if you will, in, in um, humans, they, they have a very similar problem and you might find them stuck in places or, um, uh, or just staring at a wall and, and that's so hard to see, right? So Duncan, Duncan surprisingly does not have that right now. Um, oh, you guys are saying, oh, David, little John, hi. Uh, so, um, so really, it, there's so many ailments that can happen and, and some ailments like, like what Angela was mentioning with, with dementia, you know, how do we decide when it's time when they're not necessarily present and, um, and it's hard. So, so now up to some other things that, uh, that I think about when I'm determining quality of life or helping a family is um, the pet's personality. So how well are they managing their symptoms? And there are some dogs that are fine if, they, if they're struggling to get up and they're, and they're kind of laying in bed all day and they're couch potatoes. But there are some dogs, especially you know, with high prey drive or, or we're working dogs or agility dogs, just being a couch potato is not something that, they're, that they can handle and so they get very anxious. Or a lot of dogs with cognition, they get anxious, and so their personality, or or maybe all the medicines I have to give them, I have to give them, and I'm going to show you guys all his medicines, and um, and it's a lot. And so, are they tolerating that well? Are they tolerating if you have to give sub Q fluids? Um, uh, so uh, I have somebody who wants to know what I'm what I'm feeding him. All right, so I'll, I'm going to get to his food and his medicines in just a second. So anyway, I want to make sure that the pet's personality is is looked at and. And are they dealing with things okay? Um, the next, out of the four things I think about, the ailment, the pet's personality, next is the family's beliefs. So we all have different beliefs and nobody's right. <laughs> nobody's wrong and nobody's right on, on saying when is time. And I think that no matter what our beliefs are, everybody here listening just doesn't want their pet to suffer. And so I think that's what we all have in common. And so um, for some families, saying goodbye sooner than later is what they believe in. And so they don't, they don't wanna wait until the very end. And I've helped some families where their pet was just recently diagnosed with cancer and they, and they don't want their pet to, to um, ever feel the, the effects of that. And so we've said goodbye sooner than, than many might and they might wanna keep going. I've had some families that tell me that they would have euthanized Duncan already. And that's, and that's okay. So as long as he's not in a sustained state of suffering, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, I'm okay with that. But 
the decision is, is a family's decision and, and I have to respect also their beliefs, but guide them medically and, and help them along with, um, with understanding the symptoms. And then the last part of deciding um, when it's time, I'm trying to read these things too. Oh, so kibble, we're looking at the prescription diets. Um, the last thing is, is our budgets. And so we all have different, different budgets. And now I'm not just talking about, about the monetary budget, but let's, let's discuss that for a second. Um, sometimes the ailments that our pets have, there's not much medicine that we can do. So um, let's say with cognition, there, there is some medicines that we can give for anxiety so they can help sleep better at night. There's some pheromone sprays. There's a really great diet for, for those with cognition issues, um, uh, Bright Minds by Purina. So, so it's not much of an expense to, to, care for, to care for those pets, but then there's other ailments that do, and also the size of the pet. So with Duncan, he's 110 pounds, like I mentioned, he's a big guy. And so with his arthritis and his mobility issues, um, and on top of that, now I have cardiac meds to give, that can get expensive. Um, and so um, you guys are all chatting with yourselves about the food, which is great. And so, so financially, can I, can I afford to, take, to, to give him the proper medications? And, um, and so, and I'll show you, I have, I have all his meds here, it's a lot. The next budget is time. So time budget, do we have time to care for the, for the pet properly? Um, Duncan, with his heart, with his heart medicine, he has to have um, a medicine called Lasix. And that's gonna um, kind of dry out his lungs to, to, make him, uh, to make him breathe better. So that will also make him drink more. So we have some pets that are on steroids or Lasix like this, which is gonna make them um, drink more, which means pee more. And so Duncan, um, he is a big guy, so his, his pee puddle is, is not <laughs> insignificant. And so um, one of us has to be home every four hours to let him out, or he will have an accident in the house. And um, as much as I love him, accidents in the house is not conducive uh, to, to daily living. And so he, he can't, he won't go on a wee wee pad. He's too big for, for a little diaper. And there are some of you that have small dogs that will go on wee wee pads. So that's fantastic. <laughs> but, um, but he, but he cannot, he's so big. So we have to let him out. And so I've got a lot of bath mats around that sometimes I'll have an accident on those. Um, but I have hardwood floors and so that's not easy to clean up. Um, so do I have the time to care for him? And I'm luckily in a position where one of us can be home every four hours. But if not, then that's okay. And, um, and so we just have to think about that and can we properly care for them? The next budget, so I've got the finance, the time, um, is the physical budget. So can I physically handle this? Um, this? And, and with him, like I said, I, I can pick him up, so that's okay. Am I able to physically give him all his medications? Yes. Um, so, so I can physically handle it, but if, but if I can't, or if some of you are struggling with a smaller dog and you can't actually physically handle it, then, then that's okay as well. Um, so, uh, the last budget is higher. <laughs> the last budget is the emotional budget. Um, so how am I handling this emotionally? And I gotta tell you, it's hard. So if any of you have, um, have a pet that's, you know, terminally ill or advanced age, you know that this is hard. Um, it's an emotional struggle. Every morning I wake up to see if he's still here. When I go to bed, I make sure I say how much I love him just in case he does pass in the night. Um, but even when I leave at any time during the day, I say I love, I love him because at any time they could pass, right? So we all think about them going to bed and passing in the sleep, but that doesn't happen. And my Doberman before Duncan, he actually passed when I was, when I was out in the middle of the day. So, um, so we could talk about natural passing maybe in another video. There's a lot to talk about. Um, so, um, so that's the emotional, can, can, I, can I emotionally handle this? And also the emotions of everybody in the house. So one of the things is, um, is that, you know, a lot of times couples will, be, will, will not be in alignment on what they believe in is, is, is either right or, um, or what they can, can manage. And so there'll be a lot of interfighting, if you will. So um, some of you are single pet parents, <laughs> if you will. And so you might think, um, you know, that's, that's difficult because you're the sole caretaker. But in some ways it's, it's, it's better because then you don't have somebody else to, to, to struggle with. And I'll, you know, I'll admit it's it's not always the easiest between um, between Duncan's dad and I, and so what we believe in and what we and what we struggle with. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> um, so okay, so back to evaluating quality of life. Those are the four things I'm going to look at: is the pet's ailment, the pet's personality, um, the family's beliefs, and then also uh, 
the budget. So finance, time, physical, and emotional. So there comes a point, or there's there's always a point when, when I go to help a family or when any Lapa veterinarian goes to help a family, they'll, they'll, they'll always say, you know, do I think it's time? And so there's there's a time where euthanasia is not the not the best option. They're, the quality of life for the pet is okay. The quality of life for the family is okay. Um, and so euthanasia is not something that that we would that we would suggest. On the other hand, there comes a time where euthanasia is is probably most most appropriate because there is sustained suffering. So does Duncan struggle sometimes during during the day? Yes. Um, absolutely. And I struggle along with him. So um, so I hate to see it, but. There are days where, where he might struggle more, and so that's what I wanna be monitoring and making sure that he doesn't have those, those days or lead into suffering. Um, and so when, when I'm helping a family, either, either the pet's quality of life is so good that, that, that euthanasia is not appropriate, or it's so bad that it's actually the, the best option is to, is to say goodbye. Now in between, in between those two time periods is what I lovingly call the roller coaster. So how many of you are on the roller coaster now? And, um, and that's probably a lot of you. And that roller coaster has ups and downs and you will have really good days and you're gonna have crashing bad days. You're gonna make the decision to euthanize. You're gonna make an appointment with Lap of Love and then you're gonna call the next day and cancel because it was a good day. And so we totally understand that. Um, and, and I personally get it. So, um, you know, along with the time budget, like I was talking about, traveling is, is a factor. I'm actually leaving tomorrow for 10 days. And so I worry about Duncan. Um, being managed with dad for 10 days alone, let's not tell him. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, so that's going to be really hard as well. But, um, anyway, so, so the roller coasters is a, t is a tough, is a tough phase to be in. And that's where most of you actually will, will be in. And that's where most of you call us for help. And, um, so, so I like to tell owners at any time when we're on that roller coaster phase, it's a subjective time period at any time during that phase, it's okay to say goodbye. And so it's okay to say goodbye when you've had a really bad day, you know, a couple in a row. It's also okay to say goodbye when, when it's a good day. And so um, a lot of people, that's what they want. They want to say goodbye on a good day. So, um, so just keep that in mind where, where we don't want to wait necessarily for it to be so bad that they're suffering. Um, and I know there's, you know, there's not just a look that he's going to give me one day to wake up to say it's time, right? But um, but if he does have a really bad look, that means he's actively suffering. And so I actually don't want to, to see that. Um, oh, Angela, her dog has Cushing's. My Doberman before him had Cushing's and my Samoyed had Cushing's. So I know Cushing's very well. So um, so again, back to, back to Duncan with his mobility issues. Um, some things around the house. I wanted to, to help you with manage. Hi, Greg. Um, I wanted to, to help uh, give you some tips about managing a mobility dog. And I could do just a video on mobility issues if you guys are up for it one day. Um, so uh, around the house, like I said, I've got hardwood floors. And so around the house, I've got um, bath mats and, uh, and, and runners, if you will, with, with rubber backing. So that way he's got something to grip onto. Basically, the entire house is covered like that. So there are little, you know, spaces in between the rugs sometimes that, of course, he catches his foot on that and he'll fall. But I've probably got, I'm looking over there, I have about 30, 30 bath mats, maybe even 40 around the house. And they all don't match, so it doesn't look great. And that's okay. So, um, so with the mobility, it's really important that they have good traction. We don't have any stairs, which is a blessing, but a lot of you have stairs. So I want you to be careful with that. Um, using a harness, there's a harness called Help Em Up Harness. That's my favorite harness out there. Um, and so, so watch, be, being mindful of the steps, even if it's one or two, you wanna make sure that, that somebody's there to, to help them up or down. Getting in and out of the car, he cannot get in and out of my Ford Explorer anymore. So we have a minivan that is now basically Duncan. So we removed all the seats and, and he's got his own little minivan. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, to sometimes get them up or down or even in, he used to sit on the couch. He can't sit on the couch anymore. He can only you know use his dog beds, which is probably a good thing. So. Um, the harness is really good, and then I've, I've had some families that will get, you know, um, in bathtubs where you can put the um, sticky thing at the bottom of the bathtub so that way you don't slip. I've had some families put that along stairs outside, so if they have uh, stairs out for a deck or, or down the front steps, they'll actually use that as well. So um, so with the mobility, it's just making sure that he's safe and, and that he doesn't get stuck somewhere too. And so um, there is one area of the house where, where, we, where we can't put the bath mats, and so of course it's the area that he wants to go to, so I have to keep him from that. Um, so I, uh, so I, um, you know, we do can, we can suggest baby gates, which are nice to keep, you know, um, if there's like a hallway or whatever. But the other trick 
is tension rods. So these are like um, little tension rods. I got these at, at Walmart for two bucks. And so what I did is I put like three or four up in a row for down the hallway that I don't want him to go down. So maybe just cheap tension rods instead of a whole baby gate to, to, to block off a certain area. And what's nice about these is that if you've got um, like banisters for stairwells, that these are easier to fit through that. Um, my only word of caution is to make sure you remember that they're there and don't trip them, trip over them yourself. So that has happened. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's just some quick tips about his, his, his mobility. Now, his heart, like I mentioned, he does have, um, he is on a lot of medications and one of, one of those medications is, is gonna make him pee a lot. So um, we do have to be here to, to let him out every four hours. But if you notice, he's got, um, he has a really nice orthopedic bed, um, but on it, and, and, and if he pees on this bed, it's not easy to wash this, this mattress. And, and, um, and you know, those mattresses are never like totally waterproof, right? And so, um, so what I did for, for his bed is I went and got a baby mattress Hi, Dom. So I got a, a, a baby mattress cover, rather, that's, that's waterproof. So basically anything that's, you know, baby is, is waterproof, right? So um, you can either get a baby mattress. If, if you want to get a secondhand baby mattress, they're, they're, they're usually waterproof and they're the perfect size for a big guy like him. But I got this white cover that is like a fitted sheet, if you will, if you can see it. And so I just put that around his, um, his dog bed and then he's got four dog beds, so we have four of those. And then if he happens to have an accident in the night, um, I will, it's easier, it's much easier to wash. So he's had a couple of accidents. Usually, um, usually it happens when I have to change his meds a little bit and alter them. And so he just doesn't realize, or if mom is lazy and forgets to let him out, you know, one last time before, before night. So, um, I do often, oftentimes wake up in the middle of the night to let him out like at four o'clock in the morning sometimes as well. So, um, the other thing is I want to keep him calm. And um, keeping him calm is, is sometimes a struggle. He, he's a Doberman, he wants to protect the house. Um, although any of you who've met Duncan knows that he is like the biggest lover uh, once, you're, once you're allowed in, into the inner circle. But um, if that doorbell rings, he's gonna freak out. So I've got signs that I found on Amazon that basically says don't ring the doorbell because I've got a guard dog. Uh, and so, so I don't have anybody ringing the doorbell. Just keep that in mind when you need a UPS package and you have to sign for something. So that also, um, has happened to me where I have to, you know, go find the packages. Um, uh, oh yes. Okay. You guys are talking about some, some, uh, some great ways to manage incontinence. Um, so the anxiety is important. And, um, I also know the days that the lawn guys come and that's every other Monday. So I make sure that somebody's here because if he gets worked up because he hears the lawn guys or the, um, leaf blowers and then also the garbage, the garbage truck, he doesn't like the garbage truck so much. So I'll either bring him for a walk when that, when it comes So that way, I just kind of keep him, keep him, um, Keep them calm. I also have a sound machine, so if I'm out, I have you know the lovely sound of the ocean or rain or whatever. So I play that really loud just to keep him you know not listening to, to kids playing on the street or anything like that. Um, and there's also some pheromone sprays that you can use to help with the anxiety. So with his heart, I just want to keep him calm. Uh, and also with his mobility, if he gets worked up and, and goes you know to attack the front door, um, he might get stuck and fall. So I, I definitely want to try to reduce that. He's being so good. So. Um, now I wanna to just touch base on all medications that some of you may have to have your pet on. And like I said, there are some, there are some ailments that don't have a lot of medicines, but um, mine, I, I do have a lot. So I'm gonna just show you, I have a tray that I created just for this video to show you all the meds that he's on. And so I know that, that many of you are struggling with a lot of meds. And so um, with Duncan, Hey buddy, so I've got, I've got meds here that are um, just for his mobility issues, right? So I've got a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. I've got gabapentin, which is a pain management. I've got amantadine. So these are his, his pain management. <laughs> um, and then I've got, oh, he also has, you know, low thyroid, don't they all? And then um, all these are for his, for his heart. So I've got Lasix to, to, help, to help dry out his lungs. I've got... Um, uh, Mixilatine, which is an antiarrhythmia, and then I've got uh, Pimobendin, which is used for, for some heart diseases like he has. Um, so these are a lot of medications. And, and this one pill is, is massive. There's, there's one of these that's like, I'll show you the size of this. It is like a horse pill. <laughs> 
So even for him, and it's chalky, so it's hard to get down. So I know that it's that it's difficult. Um, and I, I'm, I, I always want to make sure he's got the most, they're all important, but I know that his heart, if he doesn't get his heart meds, that's the worst thing. So I always want to make sure that, he, that he's eating his heart meds um, or getting his heart meds. But sometimes some of these medications can also make them a little bit inappetent or he's just not hungry, that, that hungry on a day. As, as, as pets get older, they decrease their appetite. It's so just a normal function. They don't they don't need that much calories, and so that's hard when you require um, food to, to get some of these pills down. And so, luckily, he's got a big schnoz, so I can uh, pill him easy. Uh, but some of these chalky pills, it's, it's not, and, and he doesn't he doesn't like to get pilled so much. So we have a wide variety of our pill pockets that we use, um, and uh, you know, I bet you some of you are are like me, and then you have to revert to other things like cat food. So I'll have to put. He does like this cat food, um, and then I've, or you know, even I've got multiple kinds of cat foods because he's just not gonna like the same, the same brand of cat food for a week, right? And then we've got different dog food, but the problem with with some of these is it gives him farts, <laughs> and he stinks. So I also added on a probiotic <laughs> to make sure you know that his gases are okay. And I don't mind his stinky farts, but sometimes they're it's they're bad. Um, Anyway, so like I just I just tell you that because I, I also know um, I've, I've reverted to cottage cheese sometimes and even cheese whiz and I just put a little cheese whiz on the pill and, and sometimes he takes it. So um, but there are days where he doesn't want to take anything and that's hard because I know he needs his meds. So I'm going to give him a little cookie treat because he's being so good right now. Um, and then there are, are days where if he doesn't want to eat anything all day, we do have some really good options now for appetite stimulants. And so I have um, something that's new on the market called Entice, and it's a, it's a liquid. So I just give him about a tablespoon of this via a syringe. Um, and I, I call this my magic juice. And in about two hours um, or less, he usually then has an appetite to eat, eat his meal. I don't mind so much if he doesn't eat a meal. Um, like I said, again, these guys when they're older, they're gonna they're gonna decrease their um, their caloric intake requirements, and and it's just a, a reality of of, of aging and, and alien pets is that is that they're gonna decrease their appetite. But I need him to get his pills, so that's uh, one of the main reasons why I, I give him the appetite stimulant is because I, I want him to have the, the meal, so that way it's easier for me to pill him. But there is a saying in human hospice. Um, Oh, hi, Lindsay, you're so sweet. There's a, a saying in human hospice that food and water are for the living and the body won't eat or drink for a future it knows it doesn't have. And so I know that it's sad when, when our pets don't want to eat and we chase them with turkey and, and tuna cans and stuff like that, and I do it too. Um, but I also realize that, you know, eventually his body won't want any food because it doesn't need any food. Um, and it's just a reality of, of what I am dealing with. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that, that I do have a lot of medications and it's not easy and I get it. This is not cheap either. And so, especially with his, with his, um, with his size, but not all ailments require all these medications. I don't have kids either. He's my kid. So I spend all my money on him. But it's time. Oh, that's the other thing. So his heart medicines, some of them are three times a day and his other drugs are two times a day. So really about five times a day, we have to give him medicine. So, um, so that's hard. And uh, so my point is, it's hard. I know it. And I'm on that roller coaster ride with you guys as well. Um, so assessing quality of life, we went over that earlier. So if you missed it, you can go back. But some, some tools to help you, we have on our website, lapalove.com. We have a lot of um, great uh, quality of life scales. There's different ones out there. Not, uh, you know, it's not one size fits all. Hi, bud. Um, so there's, there's different options. We have a lot of material online. But one thing I'm doing for Duncan is I'm, and we have this also online, it's just a calendar and it's a blank calendar. And every month I'll print this out and I'll write April and I'll put the days in there. And so what I'm doing, so you can see here, so on bad days, I will do an X and I'll highlight it and whether you could, um, oh, hi, Debbie. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember you guys. <laughs> I'll be back in South Florida soon. So um, I'll, I'll X out um, the bad days because I want to keep track of these things. You know, we talk about I want more good days than bad, right? Like that's, that's usually our line in the sand is when, is when they're having more, um, more bad days than good, then, then we want to say goodbye. But if we don't monitor it and we're not measuring it, we're never going to know because I guarantee you, and, and I've done it myself, you'll have three bad days in a row 
and then all of a sudden you've got a good day or maybe a half a good day and you forgot about all those other bad days, right? And so, um, so we're always gonna concentrate on the good days. So that's why we have to write it down. Um, sort of like diet plans or anything, you gotta write it all down. And so I will um, use, the, this is the easiest thing for me right now. Um, and then I'll write little notes in there. So we had a good walk, he went down to the, to the end of the street, he didn't have any respiratory issues today. Um, and then I'll even write down his respiratory rate, his rest and respiratory rate because of his heart issues. Um, so just, just keeping notes, keeping a diary can be really helpful. We also have an, an app, it's free, it's called Gray Muzzle, so you can get it for your iPhone or your Android. And it's just a way to just every day say if it's a good day, a bad day, or, or just a medium day. Um, and we have a calendar and, uh, and a pie chart and everything, just, it's just so you can keep track of it. So, um, uh, Andy, so uh, shoot, shoot us another email if uh, so I hear you didn't get a response, so, so certainly I'll look into that. Um, so uh, we have some stuff on our website. We've got our scales. We've got um, the the app. There's other scales out there. If you just search, there's other there's other organizations that have it. Um, so it's you know I think that's the most important thing is to, is to write things down and also come up with 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 the way you want them to go. And I I know this is this is probably the the hardest thing to think about is. Is, is ever saying goodbye. And so for me, I don't like to say goodbye, I wanna see you later, right? And so for my see you later, uh, for Duncan, I want to be present. And so I missed the opportunity to say goodbye to my last uh, Doberman. I wasn't present. I actually lost a cat recently that, um, so yes, somebody asked if I can print them off your, our website. Yes, it's under the quality of, life's, uh, quality of life section. There's scales, there's calendars and everything. So print them off, send them to people that you know who have, who have an issue. Um, so my, my last Doberman, uh, he passed when, when I wasn't home. Uh, I lost a cat recently when I was traveling. So, so I had to have another lap of love veterinarian come to the house and we Skyped. And so, um, so I couldn't be present to say goodbye. So, so for me, I, I want to be present. Um, I want to make sure he's feeling good, which means I've got some good medications that I can make sure he's feeling good before he goes. Um, and so I want to be snuggling him. So he's, you know, he's a big guy. I want to spoon him when, when, when I let him go. And so um, I don't want it to be such a bad day where he's struggling. So I'm going to be, to be monitoring this. But the point is we have to draw a line in the sand at some point to say, okay, what, what is bad, you know, what, what is so bad that we don't want them to get past? So let's say you have a dog with cognitive, you know, dysfunction and they're just, they're, they're anxious all night and they're, Maybe write down to say, you know what, if, if there's four nights in a row where he's not sleeping and he's up more than, you know, 50% of the time, then it's, then it's maybe something we want to say goodbye. Oh, somebody made a great point to video those bad days. That's fantastic because you also forget taking pictures and videoing and looking back at them is, um, is so important. So even, even I always tell all my owners, take pictures, take videos, not just for the good, because I like the good too, but also for those bad, because you want to make sure that, that you look back and you, and you, and you remember, because, um, we have something called denial, denial goggles on. And so one of my clients, um, she actually gave me this, uh, we were, I was helping her with her dog Darby years ago. And so she said, Dr. Mary, I did quality life scales and they all said, excellent. <laughs> and she said, cause I'm on denial Island. So I need you to help. So she actually called me over for a consultation just to help go over the quality of life scales with her. Because when she was doing them, she had these denial goggles on. And so sometimes you need someone else in your house, some, some, uh, a family member or a friend to, to help you out. Um, and, and make this decision because being a mom or dad, sometimes we do have those denial goggles on. Um, so I also want to talk about bucket lists real fast. I love bucket list ideas and there's so many um, uh, of our clients have done some wonderful ones. Uh, and so for Duncan, now, now that he's older, he doesn't really chase moles and squirrels anymore. Um, but for him, I want to make sure that all the, the people that love him come and, come and visit. Um, so like I said, when I started, he's a, he's a bit of a lady killer. So here in Southern California, we have four veterinarians that help families here and they all love Duncan. So I want to have a little party for him with all his girlfriends <laughs> loving on him. He's also a huge fan of In-N-Out. And so, um, I try to give him In-N-Out once, once, uh, uh, uh hi Tracy, once, uh, once a week. Um, again, it adds to his, his farts, <laughs> but it's worth it. And he loves his French fries. So we try to do that. Um, I do take loads of pictures. I've had a professional photo, you know, photo session done with him because I just really, and it's not just for me and him, but I want him like, so pictures of him and his paws and his nose and everything. Um, so uh, his in and out burgers, visits, like I said. And then, then the other thing I recommend to all the families is to give lots of love 
just specifically, just you and you and your pet for 15 minutes a day, everybody in the house. And I know you're all saying, but I always give them love. Put away your phone, turn off the TV, and just sit there and love on them. There's been a lot of research done that says if you're able to say I love you to someone before they pass, you actually handle the, the, the grief of their passing even better. And so I know that many of you just want Mother Nature to help and, and for them to, to pass in the night. But if you woke up or if you came home and they were gone, you might feel bad that you haven't said I love you. So that's why every day say it. We should say it to each other, right? Uh, but um, but definitely say it, say it to your pet. Um, as often as, as you can. So so I just, I wanna make sure his see you later day isn't one that I'm gonna regret that I waited too long. And it, it still may be, you know, and this is what I, I think it's easier for me as a veterinarian to help families than it is as me as a, as a, as a pet mom. So, um, you know, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm sad when I'm gonna let him go, because I am gonna be sad. I've had a great seven, seven plus years with Duncan, but I know I, you know, I only borrow him for a little bit and I gotta give him back. And I have been so blessed to have him. Um, and he has taught me so much as for as just a veterinarian dealing with this. So I can I could appreciate how hard it is for all of you guys to, to manage. Um, no judgment, right? So so if I decided to say goodbye to him tomorrow, you know, there might be some of you that are like, wow, he looked really good. Why'd you do that? And um, so I just want us to be to be supportive of each other when we say goodbye. So so if I want to do it when he's still well, then then that's okay too, right? Um, Oh, food allergies. This is, that's, I'd love to give her what she wants. Okay, so that's hard when you got food allergies because then they're, they're itching like crazy. So I understand, I understand. But you know what? On the last day, and this is, uh, I always tell families, if your pet still has an appetite, give them whatever they want. So if he wants ice cream or cupcakes or chocolate or whatever, I want him to have such a good meal. My friend Greg, I don't know if he's still on, but I have this fantastic picture, and if it's okay, I'll post it later, of his dog, Yogi. I told Greg, um, Yogi had mobility issues. It's a yellow, he was a yellow lab, so a lot of yellow labs, you know, um, have mobility issues. And so, um, oh, 15 minutes of unplugging, Eric, yes. So, um, so Yogi uh, had mobility issues, and I told Greg to uh, have whatever he wants to eat. So when I arrived at Greg's house, I turned the corner, and there was Yogi with a, a big pizza, he had like corn dogs and hamburgers and like, oh, it was, it was awesome to see. And he has this huge smile on his face. Um, and so I want Duncan to have as much in and out as he wants that day. Maybe a few fries for me as well. <laughs> um, oh, Dora, yes. Okay, thank you. I'll definitely post his picture up there. Um, so, you know, I want you guys to share your ideas too. So certainly put in the comments, you know, um, uh, oh, so many, many come to me on good days and days that, that are very sad. Oh, they'll always have to read. So these comments are great, and, I, and I'm gonna spend more time reading them. I know I, I don't wanna go too much longer, but um, let's share our ideas with each other. So if you have some great ideas about different types of food that you've used, um, you know, like I said, with my, my cheese whiz has been helpful. It's disgusting stuff. I, like, it's not even real cheese. Maybe it's real cheese, I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, things like the tension rods, uh, different harnesses that you use. So let's share. Um, and, uh, and you know, if you need, if you need some guidance at home, certainly, you know, reach out to us. If we have a Lapa Love veterinarian in your area, if you go to our website, which is lapalove.com, you can put in your zip code and the veterinarian that, that, um, covers your area will pop up with their information and contact and, and we can come out and just do an evaluation and a quality life assessment. And sometimes just having someone there, a fresh set of eyes, um, not only can help give you some ideas of how to manage, but also to give you reassurance that you're doing a good job. And um, you know, that's why I bring him to the cardiologist because I wanna make sure that I'm, I've done everything, that I've adjusted his meds accordingly. Um, but even if there was no medications and it was just making sure that my house is set up properly, um, you know, uh, maybe just having that reassurance will, will help you guys. So, so certainly um, having us come out just for quality life assessments uh, Oh, I'm, I'm going to read all these comments when I'm done. Might be a good idea. And of course, when it comes when it comes time to say goodbye, uh, <laughs> I you know I hope that you'll reach out to us and 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 we'll help you you know make it make it a good goodbye. So um, we have a lot of stuff on our website, lapalove.com. We've got uh, we've got quality life scales. We've got education pieces. Both Dr. Danny and I want to do more of these live videos if you guys um, like them. So I, I would love to do them as much as, as much as we can and maybe just focus on one disease. So um, maybe one day we'll just focus on cognition. One day we'll focus on kidney failure. Um, I just really wanted to, to show you guys that, that you're not alone 
And um, there are uh, many of us Lapa Love Vets that are dealing with their own pets and saying goodbye, and, um, and it's hard, so, so I get it. Um, I have wonderful thoughts for all of you, and I hope that you all have as much time as, as you can, but I want, I want it to be good time. You know, I, our priority should not just be about living longer, but about living better. And so I would much rather have a shorter amount of time with Duncan, but good time than a lot of bad time with him. So, um, so just that's something to keep in mind. I just, I just want him to, to, to be, to, to have it good. I mean, he looks like he's got it good. So today is a good day. I'm not going to put an X on the, on the calendar today, but it's still early. And so he may start to, to, to get a little anxious. Um, but he's starting to snooze already and dream twitch. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for being here. If you have any questions, you know, keep putting them in the comments and I'll answer them throughout the day. There's a lot of great stuff on our website. And again, if, if you need any one of our, our Lapa Loves to, uh, veterinarians to come out and, and just, you know, give you some guidance or, or help or, you know, hold your hands through this, um, you know, certainly reach out. We also have a wonderful group of care coordinators when you call in that are the most phenomenal group of, of people out there. I know some of them are, are, are listening. Um, Rich, I will give a, a Duncan a big kiss <laughs> for sure. And um, I also have my own personal website or Facebook page. So it's Dr. Mary Gardner, Dr. Uh, Mary Gardner. So I'll post more, you know, information on Duncan and just if you want to follow, you know, my my um, my path with him because it's it's been a long one. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and we'll see how much longer I, I count I count the the days as, as massive blessings. And I'm going to miss him when I travel. Um, but I am, uh, you know, I, I must, I must travel for work. And, uh, and so hopefully, um, when I get back, I'll still have some good, some good times with him. So I hope this was helpful to, to many of you. If you've got any questions, you know, like I said, pop them in the comment box. Um, you can reach out to us, give us a call and, uh, have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye guys.